Okay. Welcome to this special Roots Magic webinar. My name is Michael Booth. I'm Vice President of Roots Magic and also one of its developers. Also with us today is the Roots Magician himself, Bruce Busby. And uh, we're doing things a little bit differently today. I'm going to be the main presenter and Bruce is going to be running interference in the background, uh, watching questions and piping in when uh, as he sees fit. And today's topic is Roots Magic to Go, running Roots Magic on a flash drive. We'll be looking at one of the favorite new features in Roots Magic 4 that allows you to take not just your data, but the Roots Magic software itself with you anywhere you go. But before we dive in, let's cover a few ground rules for the webinar. Okay, uh, as always, there are lots of questions about time zones. We post all of our times on our blog and on the, on the website in our time zone, which is the Mountain Standard Time Zone. Uh, to convert it to your local time zone, a very handy website is www.thetimezoneconverter.com. You can enter in uh, the name of our city, just enter in Salt Lake City with the time that we post, and it'll tell you what time it occurs in your own time zone. Okay, this webinar is being recorded, as have all of our previous webinars. And this webinar and our previous webinars will be available at rootsmagic.com slash webinars. So probably sometime tomorrow morning you'll be able to go there and view today's webinar again. And you are free to show recorded webinars. We encourage you to use them in any meetings or trainings user group meetings, etc. that you may have. You're free to either uh, view them directly on our website or you can download them and uh, show them at your convenience. Okay. In terms of questions, you may have noticed that little box there, the green box with the three buttons. That is the webinar control panel. That red arrow button is to open up the control panel. The next button is to display uh, the presentation in full screen, and the third button is to raise your hand. Okay, If you click on that red arrow button and open up the control panel, you'll see that there's a box down there where you can type in questions. Just type your question there, click the send button, and your questions will appear here, and if we are able to respond, you'll see the response there as well. And to close the control panel, just click that red arrow again to close it right up. Okay, let's begin. Roots Magic is uniquely uh, developed in terms of genealogy software in that it allows you to take your data and the full Roots Magic program with you on a removable drive. Now, by a removable drive, we mean, of course, USB flash drives which are very common, almost everyone has one, but it could also be something like a portable hard drive, either one of these smaller uh, passport drives or even a bigger external hard drive would work. Or it could be a something much smaller, like a, a compact memory card, like an SD card. Roots Magic can be installed and run on any of these removable drives or devices. The reason it can do that is how it's designed. Now, most software, uh, you have to go through an installation process on the software. And that installation process puts hooks into your Windows operating system. And it'll have to use libraries and files and the registry, things like that. As a result, the, the program is tied to the computer that it was installed on. You couldn't take most programs and just copy the file onto a removable flash drive and expect it to work. For a number of reasons. One, it probably it wouldn't have all the files and, and system files and configuration settings that it needs. And second of all, if it could run, it would probably leave a lot of messy settings and temporary files and things on the computer that was running on. 
Roots Magic 4, we designed it and put a lot of effort into designing it so it runs in sort of its own little bubble, meaning it is completely self-contained. It doesn't require any any uh, external files or, or depend on anything else in the operating system. It's, it's pretty much all right there and it keeps all of its settings to itself. Okay, and because it can run in this little bubble, it can run either as a desktop application installed on your computer like most programs or it can be copied and run from a removable drive like a USB flash drive. Okay, what this means with running in its own little bubble is you can then take your flash drive to public computers and have not only your data but run the Roots Magic software right from your flash drive. And most public computers are locked down security wise so that you cannot install outside software onto the computers. And this is for security reasons. Uh, otherwise, anyone with uh, unpure motives could go in and install a virus or some spyware or something on these public computers and spy on everyone who comes after them and uses the computer. And because Roots Magic runs in its own little bubble, it does not install anything on the computer that it's running on. And so it is not blocked and it can run safely. So you can run on public computers like a library, family history library, family history centers, or even an internet cafe. All computers where you normally would not have or be able to install Roots Magic. Also computers that work. Okay, most uh, businesses they also lock down their computers for the same reason. They don't uh, want their employees to install a bunch of garbage and junk on the computers which could cause problems for their the company or be a waste of employee time. So uh, please if you do this be sure to only use Roots Magic on your lunch break. We can't be held accountable for anyone who's fired for using Roots Magic at work. And finally you can also use it at, on computers belonging to family and friends. If you're going on a trip or if you just uh, needed to take uh, your genealogy over to a, a cousin's house and show them what you have, you can just put it onto a USB drive, take it to the house, and run it on the computer from the USB drive. No need to install it on their computer or to leave any garbage or settings or missing on the messing with that computer. Okay, now often we're asked with Roots Magic, how do I choose a USB drive to install this on? Well, one of the most common questions is size. Well, how big of a drive do I need? Well, Roots Magic, as you'll see, it only requires at the most, if you put in all the bells and whistles, it'll require about 180 megabytes, which is nothing when you consider that probably the smallest USB drive available today is about two gigabytes. So there is more than enough room in even the smallest USB drive available today to hold Roots Magic, the program. Now, of course, you'll want a little bit of extra room for data and pictures and other documents or any other files that you carry around. After all, it's a USB drive. It's meant for carrying files, so you'll have other uses for it. And so the size will really depend on how much extra data and extra space you need. Mike, we've, yeah. got, a, we've got a couple of questions. Several people have asked uh, if installing Roots Magic on this USB drive will let you run it on a Mac, or if you install it on an SD card, will it work on an Android phone, those types of things. Could you take a, a swat at that? Oh, sure. Uh, now, Roots Magic even though you can install it on any of these devices, it doesn't mean that it'll just, or just because you can install it on any of these drives doesn't mean it will work on any device that can use that removable drive. Uh, in the case of an Android phone, uh, yeah, it can read an SD card or a micro SD card, but 
this is a, a Windows program, and so it would not work on an Android phone, uh, the, the program itself. You could put your data on there and take your data on the phone, but, but you wouldn't have the software itself. As for a Mac, there are ways that you can run the run Roots Magic, even though it's designed for Windows, there are ways to run it on a Mac without requiring Windows. And we actually have a blog article uh, about that. It's up on our blog, so go to blog.rootsmagic.com to learn about some of your options. And we intend to do a webinar about that, specifically about running Roots Magic on a Mac in the future. So good questions. But basically, what that means in terms of size is that any USB drive that you can buy today is more than adequate. It's big enough to run Roots Magic and uh, most people's data. Okay, one more thing to look at, actually two more. When you're choosing USB drive, speed may be an issue. Not all USB drives are created equal. If you look at the packaging or the technical specifications, you'll see uh, the speed of the USB drive in terms of how many megabytes per second is usually how it's, how it's uh, presented. And there's usually a speed for how fast it can read data, how fast you can write data to it, and seek is basically how fast you can uh, find and jump to a, a piece of data on the drive. And so obviously the faster your drive, the faster working, or well, starting up the software, it'll start it up once, and that, that will, uh, the speed that Roots Magic starts up will depend on your read time. But as you load and you make changes to your data, then all, all three of them come into play. So the faster you drive, the faster and more peppier it'll be. But uh, even on the slower USB drive, Roots Magic will still run. It'll just be a little bit slower in saving things. Okay, another consideration is encryption. Some flash drives come with built-in password protection and even data encryption. They usually cost a little bit more. That would be important if you are concerned about protecting sensitive and confidential data. The great thing about taking your, taking your Roots Magic data on a flash drive is you have it wherever you go. One of the downsides is that if you were to lose that flash drive uh, and someone were to find it, that you want to make sure that that there, there isn't any sense of a conf confidential data on that drive. So if you plan to keep information on living people or social security numbers, which some people do, or well, usually that's of deceased persons, but if you do keep it for living persons, definitely you'll want a USB drive that has encryption built into it. Okay. Now that we've talked about Roots Magic running on the flash drive, let's talk about Roots Magic to go. Okay, there's some confusion about what Roots Magic to go is. Well, well, let's talk about what it's not. Roots Magic to go is not a special or different version of Roots Magic. Roots Magic itself, the program, uh, works just fine on on your computer or on the flash drive. It's the same, exact same ver version of Roots Magic that runs on your computer or the flash drive. It has all of the features uh, no matter where it runs. Okay? Roots Magic to go is not a way to synchronize Roots Magic files between computers. If you want to synchronize your files between two different computers that you own, say a desktop or a laptop, there are other ways to do it. For example, you could use the backup and restore function in Roots Magic, or you could use some uh, another program to do file synchronizing, such as Dropbox. And that's something which we will likely cover in a future webinar. What Roots Magic to go is is a utility which comes with Roots Magic. Every copy of Roots Magic has Roots Magic to go. And what it does is basically just 
two things. It installs and updates the Roots Magic software on the removable drive. Roots Magic to Go also will transfer data files to and from the computer and the removable drive. To use Roots Magic to Go, the very first thing you must do is to install Roots Magic onto your home computer, just like you would any other software. Install it on your home computer. Second point, do not use the Roots Magic setup program to install Roots Magic directly to a removable drive. That will cause headaches and problems, and what you're essentially doing is you're installing the software um, and creating those connections into your computer, into your copy of Windows, but you're putting on a drive that may or may not be there. And so we get a lot of tech support calls from people who the state didn't understand what they're supposed to do, and they tried to actually run the setup program, install Roots Magic directly to the removable drive. Do not do that. Instead, after you've installed Roots Magic to your main computer, you'll see a little icon. Well, you'll see two icons. One will be the standard Roots Magic tree that you click on to start up Roots Magic. But you may have seen that there's a second icon that looks like that little Roots Magic tree on wheels. Okay? That is the Roots Magic to Go utility. So you just click on that icon to start up the utility. So let's let's play with that for just a second. I'm starting it up here on my computer. Okay, here we go. This is the Roots Magic to Go utility, and it's a very simple screen. There's basically three little sections on here. The first section says select your removable drive. I have not yet plugged my USB drive into my computer. So right, right here in this list, where it normally lists the drive letters and different drives I had hooked up to my computer, it has the message, please connect a removable drive. Down below, you'll see two buttons. One is to install Roots Magic to a removable drive, and one is to transfer data to your removable drive. The first one says I need to connect a removable drive to your, my computer. So I'm now taking my little USB drive, I'm going to, plugging it into the USB port of my computer right now. And I'll give it a few seconds to load in and for the computer to recognize it, and there it goes. Now what happens? As soon as I insert that drive, Roots Magic to Go looks on the drive and for a couple things. One, it looks to see if Roots Magic has been installed on that drive yet or not. And second of all, it looks to see if there are any Roots Magic data files on the drive. Okay you'll see that the two buttons, as soon as I plug them in, that the pictures on the two buttons changed. Okay. Currently, uh, the top button, it turned into a Roots Magic icon with an arrow pointing to a USB drive. And over on the right, to the right of it, it says Install Roots Magic 2, and then it'll have the name of the drive, which in this case, it's just Cruiser, and the drive letter is J. And below it says install a copy of Roots Magic on the removable drive that you can take with you and run on other computers. Now, these are the different possible icons that you can have on that first button, which is to install or update Roots Magic. The first one, when you have the Roots Magic icon with a little exclamation mark, that means that you don't have any removable drives plugged into your computer yet. Once you do and you've selected one, you'll have the picture will change to one of the other three choices. The little orange arrow pointing from the Roots Magic tree to the drive is to install Roots Magic to your removable drive. If it has a green check mark, that means that Roots Magic is installed on the removable drive and it is completely up to date. Okay, now the last button means that Roots Magic 
needs to be updated on the removable drive. Now this happens because, uh, as, you, as you may know, we put out updates to our software every about six to eight weeks usually. And this update you can download for free and install it on your computer. Once you install it on your computer, it'll be, we try to add a few little features and some fixes and different enhancements to the software in these updates. But when you run Roots Magic to go, it compares the version of Roots Magic that is on your computer with the version that is on the flash drive, if any. And if it finds that the version on your computer is newer, it'll, it'll present that last graphic there with that orange arrow telling you that it needs to be updated on the drive. Okay, so let's just go back here. And now, I, since this is a completely new flash drive, I have not yet installed Roots Magic to it. I'm just going to click on this first button to install Roots Magic to Cruiser J, to my J drive. Click that button. This little window appears. And it'll say the version of Roots Magic on my computer is version 4.0.9.9. And then on my little flash drive, it says that is not yet installed. The free space on my flash drive is 3.73 gigabytes. And to install Roots Magic using my current options, it needs 0.19 gigabytes. Now I could just click install right now and it would take care of it. Or I could click on this little arrow button on the left that says show options. By clicking on that, I have a little bit more control over what I actually install to my flash drive. I have additional files that I can install. The first one is the place database for geocoding. Now this is about a 160 gigabyte file. Uh, quite large, but it contains all of, it contains three and a half million places and their latitude and longitude and historical names and whatnot. And that's used by Roots Magic for geocoding and for mapping. If that is something which you do not use or you do not need on your flash drive, for example, you're only doing it at home, then you could uncheck that checkbox and it would say it would use quite a bit less space to install the software by doing that. Your additional files uh, beyond that are my Roots Magic settings, which is a checkbox, and my spell check dictionary. Okay, your Roots Magic settings are all those little things that you've you've how you've customized Roots Magic with the, with colors and uh, directories and options and whatnot. So if you want to copy those over from your computer to your flash drive, you want to check that. And then your spell check dictionary, if you use the spell check feature in Roots Magic where it finds misspelled words and you've gone through, you've patiently gone through the process of teaching it all of your surnames so it doesn't keep marking all of your unusual surnames as being misspelled words, then you can check this and it will copy your spell check dictionary over to the flash drive. Keep all those settings. Okay. Then over on the right, for the removable drive options, there's drive label, and this is where you can give it a name. So uh, I could call this my Roots Magic Drive. And this way I can give it a name so that when it pops up and it appears under the My Computer icon, this is the name that it will display. So by doing this, it will always be called My Roots Magic Drive when I look at it. And then this checkbox where it says Run Roots Magic when connected on Windows XP and higher. Okay, this most likely will not work for you. Okay, the reason for it, when we first released Roots Magic 4 with Roots Magic to go, this option worked. In other words, you would plug in your flash drive into your computer and Roots Magic would automatically start up and run from the flash drive. 
However, just a few months ago, Microsoft released a patch for both Windows XP, Windows Vista, and Windows 7 that disabled this feature. And yet, while it is a big pain for us, it was certainly convenient to have Roots Magic just start up when you inserted your flash drive. There was a very good reason why they locked that down. Uh, that is that it would be very easy to write a virus or a bad piece of software, hide that on someone's removable drive so when they plugged it in, that Windows would automatically run it and infect their computer. So this was done really as a security measure to uh, keep you safe. And so uh, while we don't like it, it's completely understandable. So once I have my settings set, I'm going to click Install. And it is now installing Roots Magic to the drive. Mike. And you can see, yeah. While this is installing, we've had several people asking uh, if they can use the Roots Magic to go to install Roots Magic on more than one flash drive. Um, most of the questions did say, I understand this would be a maintenance nightmare, but, you know, question is, is it actually possible? Yes, it is possible. And we'll see in just a second that, that you install Roots Magic onto the flash drive, and when you do that, it asks you to enter your little registration key that you have either you received it in the email when you purchased the software, oh, here we go, or you either received it in the email when you purchased the software or it's inside of the CD case if you bought the CD of the software. Now, there's no limit. It doesn't do any checking. Our license allows you to install it on the computers that you personally own and there's really no limit to the number of drives that you can install it on. So yes, we realize that there is potential for abuse. There isn't uh, a lot to stop you from uh, making lots of copies of this, and, but we work on the honor system, and honestly, we, we think that the benefit of this feature is worth the potential loss in sales that it's, it's better to give something which helps people out than to try to prevent people from, from pirating our software. So uh, in this case, it's going to ask me, I can either enter my registration key now or I can enter my registry, registration key later. I'm going to enter it now. So I'm going to click right here. And it's actually doing this on my other monitor. Let me see if I can move this out. It's, it's actually just bringing up Roots Magic on the flash drive. And see, and it, it's even bringing up the screen for me to enter the name and key. And I'm going to do that off screen so that you don't all see my registration key. Okay. And I've entered my key, and then that's it. It now says that Roots Magic is installed on my removable drive, on the J drive. And it has changed from that, gr that orange arrow into a green check mark. Okay, if I were to click on this button again, all it would do would be to reinstall Roots Magic on the drive, which usually isn't necessary unless somehow you messed up the, the program files on the flash drive. Okay? Now the second option here is to transfer data to and from my, my flash drive and my computer hard drive. Okay? And let me, sorry, I need to jump ahead here. And these are the five possible icons that you'll see on that second button. The first one, just like uh, in the case of installing the software, if you've got that little exclamation mark, that means that you have not yet inserted a removable drive. So it means you need to plug in your flash drive. Okay, the second one, if you've got a green check mark, it means that all of your data files have been transferred. 
and they've been synced between your computer and your USB drive. If you see an orange arrow coming from the computer to the flash drive, it means that there are Roots Magic data files that are on your computer hard drive that need to be transferred to your USB drive. If you see an arrow pointing the other direction, that means that you have files on your USB drive that need to be transferred onto your computer hard drive. And if you see arrows going in both directions, it means you have files both on your computer hard drive and on your flash drive that need to be copied back and forth between each other. Okay. So let's look at how that works. I'm going to click on this button and Roots Magic to Go looks at my Roots Magic data folder, okay, on my computer, and it looks at the Roots Magic data folder on my flash drive. These data folders are the same folders that you set inside the Roots Magic software. On the main menu, you choose uh, File, then Program Options, then Folders, and there's a little box where you can specify the default directory for your data files. By default, it's going to be your Documents folder. In fact, you can see it down here. This little section below says Data Folders, and the Computer Data Folder is going to be C, Users, Mic, and Documents. It tells me how much free space I have there, and also how much space will be needed to transfer the files. And then on my flash drive, it says that the data is going to be in J colon roots magic for data. Okay, and that there's 3.73 gigabytes left. So it searches both of these folders and it finds all the roots magic data files that it can find and it presents them in this list up above. If you want to change which folder it's looking at, there's this button down here that says change folders. If you click on that, it will ask you whether you want to change the computer data folder or the removable drives data folder. So if my data on my, it, well, if the data on my flash drive were in a different folder, I could click right here and it'll bring it up and I can, I can select a different folder. I'm going to cancel out of that because I don't want to change it. Now this, by changing these data folders, that just changes it here. This does not affect your actual Roots Magic settings. So, so Roots Magic itself is still going to be looking in these folders. This is just allowing you to change it temporarily uh, as a one-time deal for Roots Magic to go. And up here, we look at data files. It'll show us the file name. It'll show us the status of that file on the computer, the status of it on our removable drive, and then in the middle here, it'll give us the suggested action. So in the case of this Roots Magic file, it says that it's a new file on the computer, and it does not exist on my, on my flash drive. So the suggested action is to copy it from my computer to the drive. The second file, does not exist on my computer. This is a file which only exists on my flash drive. And so it looks at that file and says, well, let's, let's copy it from the removable drive to your computer. And so it, it'll have a blue arrow pointing to the left. I can choose which files I want to copy here. So I'm going to check both of these files. And when I'm ready, I just click this Transfer Files button, and it's now copying files. It's copying one file from my computer to my removable drive, and it's copying the other file from my uh, removable drive to the computer. Okay, and now I can just click Close. Okay, now I can uh, I can 
pretend right now that I am going to the, say I'm going to the Family History Center. So I'm going to unplug my flash drive. And I hear the little ding ding. I'm plugging it back in. I hear the ding ding. So I'm, I'm pretending I'm at the Family History Center now. I've plugged in my, my flash drive there. And I get the little menu asking me what do I want to do with my drive. Do I want to, and I just select I want to view the files on the drive. And so it opens up this screen. And keep in mind, like I said before, this update to Windows will not allow Roots Magic to run automatically. So you're going to have to open up this flash drive, and you'll see right here the folders on the view the folders on the flash drive, and you'll see in the main root directory of your flash drive, you'll see this little icon that says Roots Magic Launcher. All this does is it runs the Roots Magic program, which is actually hidden inside of this folder. So while you could click inside of here and hunt it down, this is just to try to make it a little bit easier for you. So I'm going to click Roots Magic Launcher, and it's going to start up Roots Magic, and it's doing this on my other computer monitor. So let me bring it over here where you can see it. And here we go. This is Roots Magic. It is running completely self-contained off of my flash drive. And I'm going to open the file. And just looking here. And I'm going to open up this boothfamily.rmgc. Okay, so I have my family file opened up here, and I have all of my data here. I can, I can uh, let's, let's pretend I'm doing some work on John Rostrum Booth. I'll double click on his name. I can even edit something here. So let's say on his birth that I discover that uh, he was not born in 1836, but is actually 1830. So I'm going to make a little change here, and I could be doing other work as well, other research at the Family History Center, and adding that work to my Roots Magic file on the this on my USB drive. When I'm done, I just close down Roots Magic like normal. Ask me if I want to make a backup, and. Uh, I can I can make the backup or not. I'm just going to skip that, and then it will close Roots Magic, and then I just shut that down. I unplug my flash drive, and then I go home, and I'm going to plug my flash. I now am home at my home computer. I plug my flash drive in, and before I start up Roots Magic, I click on the icon with the little wheels to start up Roots Magic to go. Okay, Roots Magic to go detects that the actual program on my flash drive is all up to date. I don't need to do anything there, but it says that there is a file which needs to be transferred from the removable drive to the computer. So I'll click right here, and I still have my same two files, and the status of them has changed. Okay, let's look at uh, Booth Family, the one that I made a change to at the Family History Center. On the computer side, it says, oh, that's an older, it has an older date and a smaller size, whereas the copy on the removable drive has a newer date and a larger size. So its recommendation is to copy it from my re removable drive to the computer. And this, this way, all the work that I did at the Family History Center will be copied from the, my USB drive to my computer. And, it, and uh, so I'll click on that checkbox. The second file, this Dixon's file, it says it's the same date, same size, same date, same size. So in other words, I didn't make any changes to that Dixon's file. The files are the same, and there's no need to copy it in either direction. So I'll click Transfer Files, 
and it's just going to take care of that first booth file. Okay, and now uh, if I, I can close down Roots Magic to go, I can start up Roots Magic, and I can work on I, I, all the work that I did at the Family History Center is now included on my home computer, and I can run Roots Magic there. Okay, so let's open it up to any questions about Roots Magic to go. Um, if you have, if you have uh, uh, any questions, you can just type them in or raise your hand. Okay, we, we actually have several questions uh, that we've been getting a number of. Uh, the first question uh, is, will their media be supported on the flash drive? And actually, let me go ahead and take that one. Um, when you, when you uh, currently use Roots Magic to go, your media is not copied to that flash drive. Uh, part, part of that is because every time you plug your flash drive into a different drive, that drive letter is going to be different depending on what computer, uh, what that computer settings are. And since Roots Magic is linking to those pictures uh, using a, you know, C colon slash whatever, whatever, um, those links would basically be broken every time you plugged it into a different computer. Now you could do that. You could put those pictures on and, because Roots Magic does have a uh, fix broken media links uh, option uh, in the media gallery, but you would have to do that each time. Uh, this is something we are working on, uh, so it's not like you won't ever be able to do it, but right now uh, it's not something that you actually have the ability to do without refixing re those links every time. Okay. One, import one important note about the media files, though, is that while Roots Magic does create a link it, it to the original the picture file, it does store inside of your Roots Magic data file a thumbnail version of the picture. So if you run if you use Roots Magic to go, you won't get the full resolution copy of a picture, but you'll still have a thumbnail version of the picture. So if you're looking at if you're trying to look at what the picture of the person looks like or, or a document, you, you'll still have at least a, a thumbnail, a small view of what all the pictures look like. Okay, early on uh, you had mentioned uh, about the speed of USB drives and several people asked uh, what, what is a fast speed for USB drives or how do you tell whether a USB drive is fast or not? That's a good question. Um, that that uh, that changes quite a bit. Um, the uh, generally the rule that I have found is the bigger the flash drive, the slower it is. Okay, and that just has to do with with the flash technology. The bigger it is, the more that the circuits inside of it have to route data around and so it's going to, you're going to pay for the size by having a slower speed. So um, you probably would, if, if speed is a concern, I'd look at the smaller end of the spectrum, like a two or four gigabyte flash drive. The other thing will be price. I saw some very speedy drives that boasted 60 megabytes per second, uh, but the, they were well over $100 for one of these drives where, where most flash drives that you'll buy will be $10, $15 for a four gigabyte drive. So there's a huge price to pay to get that speed. And so really it, it comes down to how much you're willing to pay. Uh, what I used right now in this demonstration, that was just a cheap old SanDisk Cruiser one of these little ten dollar Walmart deals, and honestly, it's you you don't really notice the lag, um, any any delay in speed, for the most part. Occasionally, you'll you'll see it, but um, it, it really isn't noticeable. And for at least my own personal use, I I wouldn't need the kind of speed that that I'd pay over a hundred dollars for, but 
if you think you do, then then you do have that open to you. Okay. Okay. Um, another uh, question that we've gotten a few of is um, it has to do with sinking, and I think uh, if you wanted to kind of clear up that the sinking is at the file level and not at the record level. So in other words, if you if you copy your file to both flash drive and uh, your computer, don't be making changes on both of them. Uh, so if you uh, want to yes. cover that just a little bit. Thank you. Um, yeah, when when Roots Magic to Go does these file transfers, it is copying the entire file and overwriting the file that is in the other location. So this isn't doing any record by record syncing. Okay, it's it's just copying an entire file. So you there is a danger if you were to make a change to your data file on the computer and separately make a change on the your flash drive to the same file and you bring up this file transfer screen instead of the green check mark saying files are the same or an arrow pointing one direction or the other you will see a red stop sign and you'll see in big red letters conflict Okay, and basically, if you see that, it means that you edited the file on your computer and on your flash drive since you did the data transfer. And Roots Magic to Go isn't sure which one you want to keep. Okay, so if you get a conflict, you'll have an option over here on the left to click on it, and you can choose which file you want to keep. Okay, so. The, the basic lesson here is only edit the file in one place at a time. And after you make the edit, run Roots Magic to go and do the transfer. That's why I said, when you get back from the Family History Center, just make it a habit. The first thing you do before you even start up Roots Magic is to plug in the flash drive and run the Roots Magic to go utility to copy the data file back. And if you can get in that habit, then you'll avoid any of these conflicts where you've made changes, different changes to two files, and you, you're separated, and you aren't sure which one to keep or what changes you made. OK. Um, one thing we've actually been getting asked a lot is, when you are done with using Roots Magic on your flash drive, do you need to click the little safely remove this uh, flash drive before you pull that flash drive out? Um, yes. At, uh, what that comes down to, the reason why that can sometimes be a problem is because your computer will, will, in order to speed things up, it keeps little bits of what you're reading and writing to the flash drive in memory. So if you, if you unplug your flash drive without telling it to eject it, you may lose some of the data that hadn't been written to your flash drive yet. So that's usually a good thing to do uh, at uh, libraries and public computers. You don't really need to worry about doing that after you use Roots Magic to Go, because Roots Magic to Go, we, on purpose, we tell Windows to flush everything out, to make sure that everything has been written to the flash drive and not to hold anything in memory. But yeah, when you're if you're not using Roots Magic to go, if you're if you're someplace on a computer using your flash drive, it's usually a very good idea to run that or click that unplug safely remove hardware. Okay. We're getting a number of questions uh, with things like uh, does the Roots Magic to go copy my notes back and forth, my sources back and forth, my pictures back and forth, uh, you know, my insert XYZ here back and forth. Uh, so let me just kind of mention that a little bit. Um, when you are using Roots Magic to go, what it's doing is it's copying your entire database. So it's copying your full database from your computer to the flash drive or from your flash drive back to the computer. Um, so everything about your file 
except for the media, is going to transfer back and forth. So uh, anything like your notes, your sources, your places, your names, your dates, your events, uh, all of that is going to go back and forth when you transfer your data back and forth between your flash drive and your computer. The media does not transfer uh, back and forth. Now, you could, as I mentioned earlier, you could put your media, your pictures, on that flash drive and then go in on the flash drive, in Roots Magic on the flash drive, and go into the media album and do the fix broken media links, and it will, would let you relink those pictures back up. But as I mentioned, as soon as you pull that out, that would work great, but as soon as you pull that out, and go back and try to transfer that file back to your own computer, you're going to have to go and fix the broken media links again because when you fixed the broken media links to work on your flash drive, you broke the media links to work on your computer. So you end up having to do that every time you move that data back and forth. So if it's something you really, really, really feel like you have to do, um, then go ahead and do that. But like I say, this is something. This is something that we are working on. So, uh, if it's not a, a real drastic need right at the moment, I'd probably just hold off. And uh, we should have an update down the road. I don't. I can't say when uh, that we'll be able to support the media. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, address transferring PDF files. PDF files are something kind of completely different. Um, you can create PDF files. For things like transferring files back and forth between one computer and another computer, you are better off, uh, like in the case of RootsMagic, using uh, Backup and Restore. Uh, RootsMagic to Go is not intended to sync up two computers. It's intended to sync up a computer and your flash drive. Uh, if you try to use RootsMagic to Go, to sync up two computers, in other words, to keep Roots Magic uh, the same version on two different computers, you're basically doubling or tripling the amount of work it really takes. So if what you want to do is just keep your laptop and your desktop computer in sync, just use Backup and Restore. Make From your desktop, make a backup of your file, and you can back that up onto the flash drive if you want, and then go to your laptop, put the flash drive in, and do File restore backup to restore that backup onto your laptop. Then when you make changes on your laptop and want to take it back to your desktop, do back file backup and back it up onto the flash drive again, take it back to your desktop computer and do the restore there. Um, don't be using uh, Roots Magic to go to try to sync up your desktop and your laptop because you're just going to make your job a lot harder. Okay. Um, Let's see, any other questions here? Um, how about just saving the file data to the flash drive and also the media, then run it there for both the computer and the flash drive? Okay, we do have some users that do that, and basically what that is asking is, can you just install Roots Magic uh, on the flash drive with your data on the flash drive and then just always run it from the flash drive? Yes, you can do that. You can take that and then just run that, uh, run the data and the, and the program and the data right straight from that flash drive, no matter what computer you're on, and actually not necessarily even run it back on um, on your own home computer. You do still need to have it on your home computer because when updates come out, that's how you're going to update the copy of Roots Magic on your flash drive is by running on running the Roots Magic to go and having it detect that you have a newer version on your computer and you need to update it on your flash drive. One caveat too with doing that, by keeping all of your data exclusively on the flash drive, uh, is that if you ever lost your flash drive or anything happened to it, then your data would be lost. So if I did that, I would be sure that I kept my backups, that I backed it up regularly onto my computer hard drive or someplace besides that flash drive. Okay, here's a question uh, for you, Mike. It says, my Family History Center once had to email everybody that they had acquired a very nasty virus. If I ran Roots Magic to go on that computer, is there a chance that I might be infected and what should I do? 
Uh, no, not really, because a virus, like that little diagram that we showed where, you know, the, with the little tendrils coming out of the program into the computer, a virus relies on incorporating itself into the operating system. And your flash drive has no operating system. So, uh, uh, so really, it's not going to affect Roots Magic itself. Anything that, that could alter Roots Magic, we use what's called a digital, a secure digital certificate on our software. Meaning that you cannot alter the Roots Magic program without breaking this certificate. And if anything did break it, when you tried to run Roots Magic, the certificate wouldn't match and it would it would basically not run. It would give some error message that the certificate had been broken and uh, you would know that some something had tried to alter the program. So uh, yeah, just, just running Roots Magic from the flash drive would not put you at any risk. And if anything did happen to happen, uh, you would definitely notice it when you tried to run it. And it would not, it would not be able to run. OK, another question. When you installed uh, Roots Magic on the flash drive using Roots Magic to go, uh, you unchecked the box for the place names. What are the pros and cons for that feature? The pros are you're able to geocode your place names like your master place list, you're able to find standardized place names and also to fill, have Roots Magic fill in the latitude and longitude. Also that gives you access to the gazetteer feature under the tools menu that allows you to type in the name of a place and it'll search for any possible matches in this this huge three and a half million uh, place name database. So that's the pros. Those are the, the two features, the geocoding with the standardizing place names, as well as the gazetteer that you get by installing the place database. The downside is that it takes up about 160 megabytes of extra space on your flash drive. Honestly, the only reason why I unchecked that was for the sake of time, just for the demonstration so that it could copy and install the files faster. Uh, otherwise, I normally just leave, do leave that checked. Okay, uh, so another question. Um, when you're using Roots Magic, to, Roots Magic on your flash drive, are all your features there? And the, question, the answer is yes. Um, all the features are in there because basically what Roots Magic To Go is doing, Roots Magic To Go is just that little program. Uh, and so tr try not to get mixed up with that. Uh, with that terminology. Roots Magic To Go is that little program that installs Roots Magic on your flash drive or lets you transfer your data back and forth. So when Roots Magic To Go does install Roots Magic on your flash drive, it is installing the exact same copy of the program that's running on your computer. So it's the exact same thing. So every feature is available. Uh, we had a couple of questions uh, which kind of extended this. One was can you use a uh, uh, new family search with Roots Magic to go? And the answer is yes. Again, all the features are available. Uh, so if you do want to be working with new family search, you can have your Roots Magic to go, uh, your Roots Magic on your flash drive and take it, plug it in, and you can work with the new family search uh, if you have access to that directly from the flash drive copy of your program. Okay. Um, how do we get, oh, okay, we have gotten this question a lot, and I've, 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 I've answered it a lot online, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and answer it right here. How do I find my registration number? Okay, a lot of times we don't even think about, you know, needing our registration number, because once the program's installed, it's installed. But with Roots Magic to go, uh, you need that registration number. So here's how to find it out for yourself, uh, and, um, and, and what you can do is you run the Roots Magic on your computer, and then you go into, um, let me make sure I have this right. Once Roots Magic is running on your computer, go up to the Help menu and come down. There will be an option that says Register Roots Magic. And what it does is it gives you the ability to register online, register by phone or whatever. 
choose the option register by phone and click continue. Now what it's going to do is it's going to show you in that little screen it's going to say your registration key is and it's going to list that registration key where you can write it down uh, so that you can use it to unlock your Roots Magic uh, on your flash drive. Now when you do that you don't need to call us and register because most likely you are already registered. That's just that's just a place where you can see that registration key because it, when, if you were to register online or by phone you would need to tell us what that key is so we display it right there. So that's how you can find it out for yourself um, if, if, there, if, there's, uh, if you need to. Now if you flat out can't find your registration key you can email our support uh, just support at rootsmagic.com. You can email them and they can look up the key. But it's, it's easy to look it up for yourself right there by going into, into that uh, register, uh, register your copy and, and tell it you want to register by phone and it'll pop it right up there for you. Okay, let's see if there's any last questions. Um, let's see. Can I use the flash drive on which I've installed Roots Magic to go to back up Roots Magic after adding new questions or new information? This will be a good one to wrap this up on. Um, this, uh, when you install Roots Magic on your flash drive using Roots Magic to go, it puts everything into their own little folders. And so, yes, you can use that flash drive for other things. So when you are going to make a backup of your database, you can back it up on your flash drive. Keep in mind, though, that if your program and your database are on the flash drive and you make your backup on that flash drive, too, if your flash drive gets stepped on or dies or you lose it, you're losing the program, you're losing your database, and you're losing your backup. So, yeah, it's okay to do their backup on that flash drive, but make sure you make backups other places as well, uh, you know, so that you can... Uh, so that you can get a hold of it if you happen to lose that flash drive. Okay, and then some people have been asking, how can they tell if we have, if we did install the Place database when we installed, when we used Roots Magic to go to install Roots Magic onto our flash drive? Um, well, you'll tell, you can tell by running Roots Magic on the flash drive. Go to Tools then Gazetteer, and if it gives you a message that the Gazetteer can't work, then you know that you did not install the Place database. Just run Roots Magic to go, click on the button that says reinstall Roots Magic on the removable drive, make sure you check the Place database, and then click install, and it'll copy that Place database over for you. Okay, well, let's wrap this up. In terms of odds and ends, please remember that this webinar was recorded and it should be up in the next day or so at rootsmagic.com slash webinars. So you can go back to that site, you can download this webinar or you can watch it there directly. You can also sign up for future webinars there and stay tuned because we'll be updating the calendar for February very soon with the topics for February. And there's also that survey. If you haven't taken it yet, please click on the link for the survey to let us know about what webinar topics you would like to see us teach. Okay, and uh, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us with this webinar, and we hope to see you again.